Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, the $20 LED light I ordered on Cyber Monday, let's see if it's any good. An ingenious idea to turn old film cameras digital, and after a long journey, the digital Bolex is finally shipping their finished camera. Hey, Indie Mogulers, Griffin, oh, sorry, uh, here we go, there we go. Last week, I showed you a great filmmaking deal, an on-camera LED light for only $20. So cheap that I had to pick one up. On Indie Mogul, we're always talking about the importance of lighting, and yet, I'm not really sure I like on-camera light. I always hate when television news blasts an interview subject with on-camera light, turning what could be a cool background into nothing. And any light that moves with the camera creates a weird first-person ghost hunter effect. When a visual effect calls attention to itself, sometimes that's good, but usually not. I shoot a lot of weddings in dark reception halls, but I can't imagine using an on-camera light. That would be pretty obtrusive, blinding everyone. So how can I use this $20 light effectively? Fortunately, it's pretty bright. Nothing compared to my $86 DIY light, but it's brighter than the first on-camera light I ever had, and it has a dimmer so I can choose how much light I need. These LEDs are similar in color to sunlight, maybe with a slight green tint, but definitely way more blue than indoor light. So it comes with an amber gel to help mix it with indoor light. Quick side note, the shoe mount on my Panasonic GH3 broke off, and I don't know when I'll have an opportunity to fix it. So to mount this on-camera light, I purchased an $11 flash bracket, which might actually give me more handheld stability. The problem with an on-camera light is that when you mount it on camera, it's not the ideal position for a light. Because the light and the lens are always pointing the same direction, we can't see any shadows, so it makes my face look really flat. In a standard three-point lighting setup, you'd usually place the key light over here, 45 degrees away from the camera. If I was shooting an interview, I might have the subject face the light, but film from an angle. Now I have the shadows that I need to create dimension. To accomplish a better angle with my on-camera light, I'll use a couple quarter-inch screws and a mending brace, all cheap at hardware stores, to get this light away from the camera. Suddenly, it doesn't look so awkward. The light isn't as obvious, so it looks natural. At this angle, I could also rely on a brighter key light and use the LEDs to fill in the shadows. A key light should be stronger than a fill to preserve some shadows, but this fill light helps balance the shot. So now that I know how to make this $20 camera light look decent, it'll be a cool tool to keep in my camera bag. If you want one of these for yourself, they are out of stock on Amazon, but the discounted price is still available. So you could order now and just wait for it. The last question I had for this light is, on two AA batteries, how long does it last? Okay, after 30 minutes, the brightness pretty much drops off, but even after several hours, the thing just doesn't die completely. Actually, Griffin, if our viewers act fast, they could order that light over at B&H right now as they still have them in stock, like I did. I actually have this other cheap LED light, this 36 LED one. It's an off-brand thing. It goes under all kinds of different brands, but it works pretty good as an eye light, though, uh... I'm liking this one a lot too. Last Friday we introduced you guys to Blind Panda Humor, a fairly new group on the YouTube scene who we will be helping develop their craft together, as in you and me both, by leaving your feedback, good or bad, on their videos. We showed you their introduction video, and so far there have been a lot of great comments. So if you want to try and be included in this project, don't forget to leave your honest feedback in their videos and intro over at youtube.com slash blindpandahumor. In the news this week, word is getting around about a new product in development called the NoLab Digital Super 8 cartridge. Super 8 film has been getting increasingly difficult to get. It's not impossible, it's just not as easy as it was 10 or 15 years ago. And Super 8 cameras are pretty cheap. I actually bought this one for $10 on eBay a few years ago, and I still haven't really had a chance to try it out. But with this new digital Super 8 cartridge, which fits in the cameras that take the old Kodak 8mm film cartridges, I may finally get around to giving it a go. It's still a very new concept. The first version only has a 5 megapixel sensor, the picture maxes out at 720p, but the potential is there to take this idea a lot farther, and, long term, extend the life of older film cameras. A similar product apparently already exists, called the 16 Digital SR Mag for an old RE 16mm film camera, but it's pretty expensive, and this one has the potential to benefit a lot more people. 
You know, we talk a lot about products that are in development on this show, products that one day may be available to you, and that's great, but every once in a while, it's nice to see one of these awesome projects finally get released, and that day is... Well, this week. That's right, the Digital Bolex D16 camera is finally completed and shipping later this week to Kickstarter backers. I've been following this one almost from the beginning, and I really wish I had the funds to back it from the start. If you aren't a Kickstarter backer and are still interested in owning one, they are accepting pre-orders for the next 500 cameras to be manufactured starting December 16th, next Monday at 10 a.m. on digitalbolex.com, and I really wish I had the funds to do that right now. On behalf of Indie Mogul to Ellen Joe, I say congratulations, and I can't wait to see what the first batch of customers come up with, to see what's already been done with the D16, and maybe help you make a decision about whether or not this camera is for you, check out some test footage as the first video in today's playlist. After that, the intro video for Blind Panda Humor. Remember, the best feedback will be selected to be included in next month's update. It could be on that intro or any of their other videos. And finally, I take pride in my editing. It's my one thing I love to do more than anything else. And this was, I think, one of my favorite edits I've ever done on anything. And it was for a machinima type video for GTA 5 for our channel Snake Fist Explosion, which just keeps getting more and more fun to do, to actually play and edit and put together. It's been a great time. Check this one out. I'm really proud of it. And maybe subscribe. We're almost at 200 subscribers. We may be by this time, but help us get that number up. And finally, the latest update from online video contests. Win some prizes, maybe even a cash prize, and then you could take that Christmas money and spend it on more you time. You deserve it.